Hi everybody, welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you are new, I'm Corey, and I'm really excited that you're here doing a little something different today because I have partnered with Arteza. They sent me some fantastic products I'm really excited to use and try out. So I wanted to start with a little bit of an unboxing and show you what I've got and what I'm gonna be working with for today's video. So the first thing that they have sent me is Arteza 20 Outdoor Acrylic Colors Premium Paints. So hopefully you can see those. And they've got well, obviously they've got 20 colors here. So everything from marshmallow white and you know what, you guys, I don't normally wear my glasses during filming because you get a reflection, but it, girlfriend's getting a little bit older and I need them to read. <laughs> so <laughs> bear with me for just a second. Apologize for any glare that you're seeing. Um, <clears throat> so everything from marshmallow white, papaya whip, these names sound delicious. Um, electric yellow, mango, Dijon, Tangelo, Candy Apple, I think I'm definitely gonna be using that for some fall crafting here, Shocking Pink, Amethyst, Grape, Zaffir, Zaffre, Zaffir, Z-A-F-F-R-E, Zaffir, it's like a, a blue, like a, a, a rich medium, maybe almost a, like a royal, Zaffir, um, Olympic Blue, Persian green, looks really pretty. Lizard green, jungle green, which is like a deeper forest color. Chocolate, battleship gray, charcoal black, gold and silver. So these are each, let me see. So this is what the bottle looks like when you pull one of them out. And so they're about the size of the apple barrel paints that you can pick up. <clears throat> And they are each two fluid ounces, and they're outdoor acrylic colors. So they'll be good for using on, obviously, outdoor projects if you want to do something for outdoors. So this one is the Persian green. I'm going to flip it that way so you can kind of see the color. Is that pretty? These colors are so vibrant. I'm excited to see how they look. Okay, here's the shocking pink. That is pretty shocking, right? It's almost like a fluorescent. Um, you've got the gold and the silver, and these are definitely looking metallic. So I'm excited to try these all out. Um, here's the Zaffir, you know, so you can see it's a really deep, I'm guessing like it's close to royal blue. Um, so yeah, so these are exciting, right? And I am going to be having um, information in my description box. So if you want to check out their website and see their other products, um, or if there's anything here that you would like to try out for yourself. Okay, so the next thing that they sent me is 45 Wood Slices Premium. So these are natural pine wood with bark, pre-sanded. I love that polished smooth surface perfect for arts and crafts they are 2.4 inches to 3.15 inches in diameter um, and then 0.4 inch profile now if you work with centimeters the centimeters is six centimeters to eight centimeters in diameter and one centimeter profile and this is how they come I'm gonna open these up. Okay. So there's a warning on the plastic bags just to keep it away from babies and children, but you can see all of the slices in here. Isn't that cool? And I'm gonna open up the plastic here so that I can pull one out and or maybe I'll pull out a few. Ooh, they smell like pine. I don't know why I'm surprised by that because that's what they are, but it smells pretty. Mmm. Oh, and you know what? They also See? They also have pre-drilled holes. So if you wanted to use them maybe as a, an ornament of some sort, if you wanted to be able to string them up on something. Light bulb moment. Um, so, huh, yeah. 
I had some ideas brewing as to what I want to do with these, and but they're like concepts. I haven't fully formulated the ideas just yet. Um, <clears throat> Because as you know, girlfriend likes to craft on the fly. So I always start with an idea and then I figure it out as I go. So I'm excited to uh, to try these out. So these came 45 to a pack and you can see based on the size of my hand. I, I gave you the dimensions, but I, I'm visual. You tell me something is three inches, I can kind of picture it, but I like to see what it actually looks like. So these are gonna be a lot of fun. And then, that aside, the other things that they sent me that I'm excited about because you know, and I know not everybody has a silhouette or a Cricut and you always have other options. You can use transfers or you can um, use printables. There, you could hand letter things. There are a lot of other options. So I get that not everybody has a cutting machine, um, but I do have a cutting machine and I use it fairly often in my crafts. Um, and so they sent me 50 sheets of black vinyl. I'm excited about these. So these are 12 inch by 12 inch, 50 sheets. Um, in centimeters, it's 30.5 by 30.5 centimeters. 50 sheets of self-adhesive vinyl, premium, glossy black. So I will be doing a lot with these. I already have something in mind for today's projects that I'm going to be doing and showing and sharing. And then to go along with it, they sent me transfer tape. So I'm excited to see how their transfer tape works as compared to some of the others I've been trying. I use the Duck brand a lot. I haven't been able to find the clear uh, shelf tape that they have at Dollar Tree that a lot of people talk about using. So take my glasses off again in case that's distracting. Um, but uh, this is clear one inch alignment grid. So it has the grid on it if you find that helpful. Um, premium transfer tape. Of course I took my glasses off now I can't read what I was talking about. But it's a 12 inch by 25 foot roll. So this will last me quite a bit. Oh, oh, and it comes with a squeegee. I hadn't realized that before. So excited to see how this performs versus some of the others that I've used because um, to be honest, the silhouette transfer tape, I find that the vinyl doesn't like to stick to it. So I have a really hard time getting the vinyl onto the transfer tape and then yeah so it i struggle with with their brand for whatever reason um so yeah excited to try these so at any rate without further ado let's go ahead and get started on the crafting i can't tell you anything more about what it's gonna be yet because i haven't made them yet so let's go ahead and see what i make so here we go with diy number one so for the first project, I'm going to be using the Arteza wood slices as well as my Sharpie marker and the Arteza outdoor acrylic colors. So opening up my wood rounds and I was surprised I, that they had the um, twine in there for hanging things when I opened up the package. So that was a nice surprise because I had not noticed that before when we were looking at them together. So getting out the wood rounds that I want to use for the project, I'm going to be using a total of nine. And just taking a look at them. Now checking out the paint colors. This is how they come. They're super pretty. Love all of the vivid colors. And I'm just pulling out the ones that I think I'd like to use for this particular project. So I've got the jungle green. Um, I thought I was going to use mango, but then I decided to go with Dijon instead. I also have the candy apple red out there. This is the papaya whip. This is Tangelo. I love these names. And then I pulled out the grape and also chocolate. And then I pulled out the gold as well. So. I'm also pulling out my little palette from the Dollar Tree. I think those come six to a pack and they're really great for uh, just having your little paint available and blending and all kinds of stuff. So I'm just trying to decide how I wanna 
deal with the paints. Some of them are a little bit more opaque than others and I haven't tried them yet. So getting ready to, to test them here live. Starting out with the Tangelo and getting a little bit of that on my brush. I'm gonna come in and at first I was thinking I was going to paint the entire wood round. But then as I started to do it, I was like, you know what, let me only focus on the center area and then I'll work my way out. And I ended up doing more of a dry brush as I got to the outer edges of the wood round because I wanted to have that wood texture still kind of come through. So with the, the wood green and I found that these paints really did allow me to do that. If I had gone back in and added extra coats, they would have been a really nice full coverage, but you can see here with just this one coat, I'm still able to see some of that wood grain coming through, and I liked that. But the paints, when I squeezed it out onto my little palette, you can see it's really nice and thick, so you can get a really good coverage. This is the Papaya Whip, and it's a nice cream color. When it was in the bottle, I thought it looked a little bit more peachy, but it really is a cream color. And so I came back in with some orange because it was a little bit lighter uh, than what I wanted to have for my wood rounds. I was afraid it was just gonna kind of wash it out. It's a beautiful color, but I really wanted to go for the fall color palette here with all the fall colors and thinking about what you would see if you are walking through the woods in New England this time of year, or maybe in another week or two, as we get closer to October. So this one is the Candy Apple Red. Look at how gorgeous these colors are, you guys. Really nice and vivid. And I found that they dry relatively quickly, which is great, because you know me and how impatient I am with waiting for things to dry. But um, I also found that, and I'm so sorry because Sammy is tearing around <laughs> playing right now. So I know you're probably getting some noise in the background. So sorry about that. Um, but I found that I wanted to come back through and blend some of my colors together. And so I just was finding that I had to apply a little bit more paint to have that happen because it was drying. But it, you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, it could also be the fact that I'm using this on raw wood and the wood may very well have been sucking up some of that paint and helping it to dry a little bit faster than it might on other surfaces. So if you are working on canvas, it might not dry nearly as quickly. So just wanna kind of mention that. This is the Jungle Green. Look how pretty that is. I love hunter green colors. So this is the Jungle Green. And again, I'm mixing in a little bit of the Papaya Whip just to mute that a little bit. Um, the other color that I had used, I think that was the chocolate that, yes, that was definitely chocolate that I used um, on that other round. And I'm just gonna be coming through and blending the colors as I go. This one is the Dijon, so it's like a mustard color. So just using all these nice muted fall tones or creating muted tones if the colors are a little bit more vibrant. Look at this grape, you guys. It's a nice, deep purple. in the papaya whip as you can tell because I'm using it pretty much on all of the rounds to just blend in some with some of these other colors just to tone them down a little bit and then I'm going to be coming back in with the tangelo in a lot of instances I'm also using the chocolate here and there again just to give that kind of more muddied look for lack of a better term that you would see out in the woods in all of the the fall leaves and i'm also keeping in mind that i'm planning on using the gold over top of these colors so i want to make sure that i'm going to have enough of a contrast for my gold to stand out in a little bit so that was also the motivation behind kind of dirtying up some of these colors, if you will. So now I'm coming in with my black Sharpie paint pen and I'm going to hand letter 
the outlines of the letters for the words that I want to write. And essentially, I'm just writing, hello, fall. And then once I have all of my letters drawn out, I'm gonna come in with the gold paint. And this is beautiful, you guys. The camera really isn't even doing it justice. It's a really pretty metallic gold color and it gave really good coverage. Now I've got this sped up about three times actual speed. So you can tell I'm just really taking my time, trying my best to paint within the lines. I was more successful in some areas than others. Um, but just coming in and filling in all of my letters for my Hello Fall. And it's funny, while I was doing this, I was, uh, I was really just trying to use a bunch of the different colors and I had fall in mind. And I did have in mind that I was planning on hanging this at my, on my mantle, under my mantle at my fireplace. But I wasn't really thinking about the swag, or excuse me, the garland that I had done previously. But you know what, you guys, it complemented it so nicely in the end, you're gonna see. So now I'm coming in with my twine and I'm gonna come in through the back of each of these and I'm gonna pull up the loop and flip it over my wood round. And that's how I'm securing it. I'm gonna come in and do it slow, more slowly for you here so you can see what I did. But pinching the twine really at the natural fold line that I have from it having been in the package, pinching that, I'm going to thread it through from the back to the front I'm going to pull that down over the front of the wood round. So pull up my loop enough so I can get it over the wood round. And then go ahead and tighten it. And so that is just going to attach my rounds to the different places along the way. And it'll hold them in place and they will not slide that way. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that all the way down the length of my twine for as long as I need <clears throat> to take care of my two words. There you go. And so once I've got them all done, I line it up. I'm just measuring my twine to be the same length and Coming it off. So here we go with DIY number two. So for this one, I'm gonna be using some more of the wood rounds, also using my bare wax in dark. I've got some uh, um, wood filler, spackle, and some uh, stencils that I've been wanting to use for a while. I think I picked those up at Joann's. So I'm just gonna fill in those little um, pre-drilled holes because I'm not gonna need them for this project. I'm actually not gonna need them for the next project either, so I went ahead and did that at the same time, but you'll see in a little bit. And I'm coming in with my wax and just giving it a nice light coat and blending it away with my little Kleenex hand towel that I love to use. And I did both sides of each of these rounds because you know how I like to have things finished. So lining up my stencils, I'm just trying to make sure that these are on as centered as possible. And once I have the stencils the way I want them, I'm gonna come in with my Arteza outdoor paint again. This is the papaya whip that I'm using. And now on these coasters, because I am using the outdoor acrylic paints here by Arteza, I'm thinking I don't need to Mod Podge them because if they are outdoor grade, they should be able to stand up to condensation on glasses. And I've also used the wax on my wood rounds, which should protect the wood. So of course I'm using my cosmetic sponges and you know how I love these because I can cut them down to size and I really need to be able to do that on these little tiny stencils so that I can really get in there with the different colors where I want it and it just gives me a lot of control on where I'm placing the paint. So as I mentioned, I'm using the Papaya Whip. This is now the Jungle Green that I'm using and then the Candy Apple Red is what I've used on the hearts. So 
I just went over it a couple of times where I felt like I wanted a little bit more coverage, but this paint really does do a good job on even just that first coat. I think I did a second coat on the papaya and then on the red just because I wanted it to be a really nice deep red. Um, the green, I did not need a second coat if I recall correctly. It was good with the one coat. And here we go with revealing how these stencils turned out. I got really nice crisp lines. I really like the um, thickness of this paint. I just, I enjoyed working with it a lot. So as I'm pulling the stencils off, I'm thinking about how the blessed and the gathered, they just look a little bit more plain. And even this last one, I just felt like I wanted them to look more like a set. So I'm coming back in with the papaya on this one and just making a little fun squiggle in the middle just to have it match up with the others so that they all look like a co cohesive set with the same color palette. And then on the Gather and the Blessed, see how cute, but on the Gather and the Blessed, I'm going to come in with the red and the green, and I am going to just do some fancy little stuff. Okay, DIY number three. That was quick. All right, so coming in with some wood rounds again, as I mentioned, I sealed up those holes. This is my Dollar Tree jute cord. I have some tumbling tower blocks. I'm using some floral wire and then some of the Arteza outdoor paints. Oh, and a twig from, I think this actually came from the broomstick. It might've been from my yard, but I think it was from a broomstick that I used for a different project. So for this one, I just kind of squirted my Arteza Tangelo right onto one of my wood rounds. And for this one, I am giving it a really good coverage on the front and the back. And then I did a bit of a spotty coverage on the sides where the bark is. I just decided that uh, I'm kind of crafting on the fly here as per usual. And I decided as I started painting the bark, um, that I just wanted that to be a little bit more rugged looking, if you will. So you can see I painted both sides. I'm looking for the flattest part on my round here because I am gonna have these stand up. It's not gonna stand on its own. So I did decide to go ahead and glue it to my little um, tumbling tower block. So I used some hot glue there. I did a really good job. And then it also gave me something to hold on to for finishing up my paint job. So I decided to go ahead and do the same thing with the other two before I painted the backs on those, got them all situated, and then I went ahead and finished up with my paint job. And I was just careful down at the base so that I didn't get the paint on the little tower blocks. the orange coverage the way I wanted. I came in with some of the chocolate and the papaya whip and I'm just blending them together and creating the little contours of my pumpkins so that these look a little bit more like pumpkins rather than just orange circles. So I am not the best painter you guys. I am learning as I go but again I really enjoyed working with these paints. I just kept coming back in with more of the colors that I thought I needed to get the look that I was going for. And that's the great thing about paint. If you don't like the way that you've done it the first time, you can paint right back over it and come in with a different color or try a different um, stroke and, and really just get it the way that you want it. So I did that on the front and the back of each of my little pumpkins because again, I like having things uh, finished. And because these are gonna be standing up and I can put them on a little tiered tray or I could set them out on a counter, I just wanted them to be finished on both sides so that if you saw the back, it just looked complete. So now I'm taking my twig and I am scoring it with my scissors. I'm gonna break it off where I want it. And this little twig was sturdy, you know? It took quite a bit of force, I would say, to, to break it. It wasn't very thick, but it was really hard. So um, I just got that broken off 
not looking for super clean edges because if you think about a pumpkin stem, they really aren't very clean edges usually. I mean, sometimes you'll see a cut edge, but a lot of times they'll look a little bit ragged. So I was fine with these not being perfectly clean cut. Otherwise I would have used my little miter box to, to cut them. And you, so you certainly could if that's your choice, but this is the way I chose to have mine. So I'm just using a little bit of hot glue to secure them to the tops of my pumpkins and just making sure that I'm holding them there until the glue cooled down enough to hold that little stem up on its own. And while it does look a little wobbly there at first, it secured them actually quite well. So. Then once those were all set, I'm taking my floral wire and you could take any type of wire. I just happened to have this and I thought it was gonna be nice for, um, for what I was looking to do here with these little pumpkins because they're miniature. Tried to wrap it around my finger to get the little tendrils going and then decided that my finger was just too thick for the size of the tendril that I wanted. So I used a paintbrush instead and just wrapped it around and around and around and then pulled it off the, the paintbrush. And now I'm just twisting it around my little stem. And then I will eventually go back and just secure it with a teeny tiny little bit of hot glue because there's not really anything to secure it there other than it just being twisted around, but it can slide right up off of that stem. So I just want to have those nice and secure. So again, just went around the paintbrush and then kind of stretched out the little tendrils until they were the way that I wanted them. So then I'm coming back in with just a teeny tiny dot of hot glue just to secure them. And then I'm gonna take my Dollar Tree jute cord and I'm just wrapping that around my fingers to make a cute little finger bow. So I think I wrapped it around about a dozen times and then I cut off another tiny little piece of jute cord to tie around the middle of the bow. And that'll serve as my little tails as well. And then I'll just be attaching it to the pumpkin. So round and round and around the fingers, cutting that off, cutting a little extra strand, tying it in the middle. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I think I may have gone a little bit closer in and a little bit slower for the third one just to show you. Coming off my little ends, yeah. So this, is, this one is in real time or almost real time. I definitely slowed it down here as compared to the last ones. But yeah, no, this is still sped up but just not quite as much um, so again wrapped it all around my fingers I'm cutting off another little strand wrapping that around the middle and then just a simple knot that's all it is making sure I have it where I want it and then I'll tighten it up again and finish off my knot And then I just kind of twisted it around and fluffed it up a little bit, just made sure that the little bow was how I wanted it. And then I'll go ahead and secure it with a little dab of hot glue. Now, if you don't have a hot glue gun, you can use other types of glue, you guys. Elmer's would work fine for attaching your bows. For the stems themselves, I would probably use either wood glue or maybe a super glue. I honestly haven't tried super glue on wood, so I'm not sure how it would hold up, but I did have somebody ask me um, what other glue I might recommend. So here, time for a shout out, time out. And I just wanna say thank you to Merle for sharing her pretty pumpkin. She made this out of um, her mom's white sock. <laughs> so I think it's super cute. 
And if you'd like to be a part of the shout out timeout, please just email me at craftedbycory at gmail.com. And I did have another viewer who did send me a really cute project from area code 219, but she didn't give me her name and I'd really like to give a proper shout out. So if that was you, make sure you email me about your home sweet home project. So here we go with DIY number four. So we're gonna be using the Arteza little squeegee that I'm really excited about, along with their Arteza, um, oh my gosh, transfer tape, I'm losing my mind. The Arteza black gloss vinyl, and then I had some glass uh, vases that were rectangular in shape. I honestly, you guys, I don't, I've had them for years. I have no idea where they came from. I just, I've had them and I decided I wanted to use them for this project. So I did use my vinyl cutter, um, my Cameo Silhouette for this. Um, you could certainly try to find some stencils or something of that nature and use those to wrap around this. I'm trying to think of what else you could do. You could perhaps paint your glass vases if you wanted to. So maybe if you had, um, I'm just trying to think, stickers, lettered stickers that you could put on with little different shapes and then paint around it. I'm trying to think of other options because this really did come down to um, being easiest with the vinyl cutter. But if you're creative, you can always come up with another option. So I'm cutting down my transfer tape to the size that I want. I love that Arteza has these uh, grid lines on there because it helps with lining everything up. And when I cut this out on the vinyl cutter with my design, I did have the cutter score right down the middle of my two designs. So you'll see me <laughs> putting this transfer tape on and I am gonna be able to just pull up exactly what I want because I did have the cutter cut right down through the middle there. So you'll see that in just a second. So I'm gonna peel that right up. And so I was struggling a little bit here. It took me a few minutes to realize that, hey, Corey, if you flip it over and pull the, pa the backing off of the vinyl, rather than trying to pull the vinyl off of the backing, it's gonna work a little bit easier. <laughs> so eventually I figured it out. Um, so it does look like I'm struggling here, but once I figured it out, you guys, it really honestly was uh, very easy to work with. So here you can see I'm just pulling the backing away from the vinyl instead of the vinyl away from the backing and then it was perfectly fine. So I did try to line this up and I had a little bit of a fail. It was off to the side a little bit and I'm like, oh, my enter is a little bit off, but I was afraid I was gonna lose my elements if I tried to pull it back up. So I just went with it. I figured the whole thing is glass. It's gonna be lit up. It's on the corner. You'll still be able to see it. So was it perfect? No. <laughs> but crafting rarely is perfect so uh, if you've listened to me before you know I'm a recovering perfectionist so stuff like that I, I just I have to learn to let it go you know so pulling off some of my transfer tape here so that I can wrap my vinyl right around on the image so this is covering my entire vase all the way around and now I'm really tugging on this transfer tape you guys and it did not stretch and it laid nice and flat if you can see it there on my craft table it didn't curl up on me it was a nice weight and it didn't stretch out of shape when I was pulling it off of the vinyl like that which I loved I actually used the same piece of transfer tape for all three of my decals and here I am a slow learner <laughs> I'm like oh yeah duh you gotta pull it from the opposite way and then it came right off onto the transfer tape so it was all good so just lining that up trying to get it a little bit more lined up with my vase this time i was much more successful this time which is good and squeegeeing it all out and I don't know if you saw before, I did have my little piercing tool that I was using. I had gotten some bubbles when I put the um, vinyl on the glass 
And so I squeegeed them out as best I could, um, but where I couldn't quite get them, I just pierced it, just a teeny tiny little hole that no one will ever even see. And then I was able to squeegee right down because it allowed the air to escape. So just a neat little trick that I've learned. So here they are. I just put some paper in there for now so you can see the design with them all lined up and we'll have them all lit up in a little bit so you can see the full effect. But aren't they cute? I was really happy with how they turned out. Give me a big thumbs up if you like them and leave me a comment. So here we go with DIY number five. And this really isn't quite a DIY, you guys, but I picked this up from the Dollar Tree. It's a pencil and brush organizer. And then I also have a little Lazy Susan mechanism that I picked up from Amazon that I've used one of these in a past project. I'll have the link in the description box in case you have interest. And then my hot glue gun. So I wanted to share this because I was excited that I found it again. I had seen it a few months ago at Dollar Tree, thought I should pick one up, and then I didn't, and then I regretted it, and I just found it again at Dollar Tree, so I grabbed one. I was looking to see if there were instructions on how to put it together. There are not, but it was really, really straightforward. You just pop the little legs in to the base, and then you pop the top right on, and it was a lot easier than I anticipated. It came together really quickly. So now I am going to glue my Lazy Susan down. I decided not just hot glue, I wanted to use Gorilla Glue. So I'm adding that to the part that I know will touch the base of my organizer. And then in different places, so on the outside corners, I'm using my hot glue, not over top of the Gorilla Glue because I don't want it to mix. But I'm using the hot glue for the immediate bond and the Gorilla Glue for that long-term bond. Now, this little organizer is too light to spin right now, so I went ahead and put all of my brushes in and some of my tools in there. You can see I'm just using a, an old can right now, so I needed to upgrade. And once I had all these in there, it then was heavy enough, so now it spins. So really happy with that. So moving on to DIY number six. So for this, I'm gonna be using a swag form from Hobby Lobby. It was originally $3.99. I've had this for a couple of years. You guys just haven't gotten around to using it. Um, I'm guessing I got it on sale. And then I've got various picks I'm going to be using as well. What I'm starting out with here is some grass that I'd cut off from some Dollar Tree picks that I hadn't had that I'd used for another project but I hadn't used the the grass part of it. So I'd saved that. I like to save everything because you never know when you're going to be able to use it. I'm just trying to figure out how long I want it. I don't want it to be hanging over the form too, too much because I was afraid it might look a little funny. So I got that trimmed down to the length that I want and I'm trimming down the other, uh, other bunch to match <laughs> because I want them to be the same length on either side. Essentially, I'm going to be doing this symmetrically. So whatever I do on the left, I am also going to do similarly on the right. So I'm just going to be tucking these in in between the twigs. And for these little branches, they were relatively thin. So they're not real snug in there. So I will come back in with some hot glue eventually and just secure those in place. Um, you'll see later when I come in with the picks, they're a little bit thicker and they did not need to be secured with the hot glue because they were just nice and snug in there. But for these little uh, grasses, it was going to need a little bit more security. So here I come, just a little tiny dab of hot glue. You do not need a whole lot, just enough to make sure that it's secure. So now I'm coming in with some picks. These are also from the Hobby Lobby that I've had for a couple of years. And these have these really fun little tendrils on them that you might find on a pumpkin and some beads. They've got a little bit of shimmer, but I'm thinking that I want them to be kind of background. So I'm getting them all prepped, cutting off my tags and just fluffing them out and helping them expand so that they are ready to be putting in here. 
And right now I'm just trying to decide where I want everything. I'm not securing anything at this point. And you'll see I've got the same type of picks in a different color. So I've got the orange and then the gold tones. And then I decided I wanted to use this Dollar Tree pick. This is, I don't know what it's called. Um, I'm gonna call it goldenrod. I know it's not goldenrod, but just for lack of a better term, I'm calling it goldenrod. So I'm gonna remove the other picks that I had been uh, starting to place down and I'm gonna tuck in my goldenrod to have it be more background, if you will. There were five little pieces once they were all cut apart and then I had another pick from which I just cut one other little piece so I had enough for three on each side. Then I'll save the, the rest of the other one for a future project. So now I'm going to come in with the picks that I was working with before and I'm just trying to figure out how long I want them to be. I'm using my wire cutters to trim them down to the size that I want and I'm just going to tuck them all in. And these were actually in there securely enough that I did not need to come back in with hot glue for these. You certainly can if you want to make sure that they're extra secure. I just didn't find it necessary for this particular project. If I were doing a grapevine wreath, I probably would come in and secure it with hot glue, especially since as you go around the curves of the wreath, uh, there's more of um, a chance that it might dislodge and, and fall out, but with this little swag I was finding everything was really very secure. So tearing apart this little pick as well, I like to pull things apart, you guys, and, and use them piece by piece. It just gives you more control over where you place things. So it lets you arrange them in a way that's pleasing to your eye. And anyone can do this. This is not hard. If you pick out some flowers that you think are just pretty and that complement each other and get yourself a little form, it's really just pull the pieces apart and tuck them in where you think that they look pretty. That's all this is, you guys. It's a really simple project. And it looks like you spent tons and tons of time on it and had to plan it all out and you know be a floral designer, but you really don't. Just pick out the things that are pretty to you and you can just tuck them right in and make something really, really pretty. Pulling apart my uh, little pick again and just deciding how I want to layer this. I'm going to tuck some of it in behind some of those little yellow flowers that I placed and then I'm going to be tucking some of it in front. I'm just making sure that I've got them at the lengths that I want. And I'm always gonna try it first before I cut it because you can always cut off more. You can never add it back on once you cut it. Well, I shouldn't say never. There are always ways to make things a little bit longer, but it's more involved. And so it's better if you just to measure first and then cut it down to the size that you want a little bit at a time. And I'm not too worried about how everything is looking in the center right now because I am going to be coming back in with a bow to cover up that middle section. So if the ends are a little bit jagged, I'm really not too concerned about that at this moment. So now I am coming in with some orange pip berries. I love these little pip berries. I think they are so fun and so pretty and I love that orange color. It just makes me happy. So gonna tuck a couple of these in on either side. It's just gonna give it another dimension, a little bit more texture. We've got a lot of texture going on here, but just a lot of different elements. So you got the soft flowers, you've got the seed pods, you've got the pit berries, the grasses, and they're all complementing each other. Decided I didn't need that last pick, so I'm all done with that. See how pretty and full it's looking? 
So I was gonna come in and make a bow and then decided I really wanted something more rustic for this. So I had this burlap bow. I don't remember if I got it from Joann's or Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I've had it again for a couple of years and decided that I would use it for this project. And it just has a twist tie on the back. So I'm just wrapping it around there and twisting it off. And then I'm all done with this project, you guys. Fluffing up my bow, making it look pretty. And there you have it. Leave a comment for me and let me know what you think of this project. So here we go for the final reveal. Okay, everybody, so that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a big thumbs up because it really does help support my channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell because that way it'll notify you every single time I upload a new video. Until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thank you again so much for watching. Take good care. Bye.